start this building, uh, if you'll just give me a moment, I'd like you to think about supporting my page in other ways. So you can, of course, click uh, on subscribe. Uh, you can give a like, you can leave comments, all of those things help the great YouTube algorithm. And to be quite honest, in many ways, that's all I've ever been doing this for. But now I do actually have a Patreon page. It's uh, here. Patreon.com slash Magathea Builder Worlds. And these people... And these people... And now since the last video, these guys here... have all signed up and become my patrons. That means that on the 9th of August this year, when I do my first draw for my patrons, one of those lucky people, or possibly you if you come and join before then, stand a chance of winning a commissioned piece of scenery built by me just for you, for any game system you like. I'm doing that on the 9th of August because the 9th of August is the first anniversary of me putting up a actual piece of terrain build on this YouTube channel. Um, so that's how it's going to work. We're going to be having uh, draws and giving away pieces of scenery four times a year. Oh yeah, and this time round I'm also going to be giving away a free Magrafia Builder Worlds t-shirt to one of those patrons as well. A different person, not necessarily the person who wins the commission build. So, please do go and have a look at my Patreon page. I'd be really appreciating that. For the price of a cup of coffee, you could be in the draw for August the 9th. Anyway, thanks. Let's get on with the build. Come check this out. Hello and welcome to Magrathia Builder Worlds. This is a Burrows and Badgers build. It's kind of an impromptu build, to be quite honest. Um, but it's, it's a good thing, too. I'm in different surroundings to where I normally would be. I'm certainly not in my workshop. Uh, I'm uh, elsewhere for reasons. Um, I'm camping out and I bought stuff with me. Um, and although I'm in the middle of the Black Dragon Inn build, I'm also working on something else, and that is a, a model for Burrows and Badgers. And I'm doing this because I've been clearing out the workshop recently, and some projects uh, have just been kicking around and need finishing. And this project needs finishing because at the minute it looks like this. And this, and um, it's looked like this since May last year. Because uh, I know that because I found the photographs of me putting this thing together uh, in May last year. In fact, look, these are the photographs here. So there you are. That is the construction of a water wheel. It's an MDF water wheel, laser cut, um, which I have enhanced quite considerably, and. Um, I'm going to make a tidal mill for the village of Bimfliot uh, in my B&B &B kind of like uh, campaign world. Um, that was part of the plan, it has been for ages since last year when I was making a lot of stuff for Bimfliot, uh, and this one never got done. And these two bits have been kicking around my workshop now for over a year, and uh, rather than just sticking them in a box or bag or ignoring them, or worse, just binning them, I thought, what the hell, make the model. So. That's what we're going to do. Um, so, come down here and I'll tell you what I've got in mind. Oh, wait a minute. It's just occurred to me. Some time since I've done a Burrows and Badgers build, you might not be familiar with the Benfield models. I suggest that you go and check out my Burrows and Badgers builds if you haven't seen them already. If you don't know anything about Burrows and Badgers, Burrows and Badgers is a game by Michael Lovejoy. Uh, of Oathsworn miniatures. These dudes. It's an anthropomorphic skirmish game with 28mm figures. Well, I've, some of them bigger than that. This puffing's quite huge. Um, it is the game that I've played the most in the last three years. And I've often said if I had to pick one game and it was the only game I was going to be allowed to keep and carry on playing and I had to bin everything else, I'd keep B&B. &B. Brilliant game. Brilliant community, and I've made loads of scenery for it. Check out my Burrows and Badgers playlist. They're pretty big. There are scenery showcases there. You can see loads of models. And right at the start of this channel, over a year ago now, I posted a video of Ben Fliot, a nighttime shoot of my B&B &B village. It's pretty cool. Go and have a look at that as well. And then come back and check out this build. Um, if you like all that and you want to make sure you see all of this build, of course, you can subscribe. Click subscribe, do it now, do it, do it now, do it. Actually, quite a lot of you already have done. Thank you very much. But if you haven't, click it now. Let's get on with the build right now, down here. 
Cool. What we got then? Well, if you're familiar with Benfield, you'll know it's a village in a marsh and all the buildings are built on little islands and this is where I'm starting. So the reason why I thought I'd get on with this build is I've got a chunk of it done already so it shouldn't take me too long. This is a hardball base with a 25mm thick low density polystyrene island already cut and stuck on it. Fat side down this side because this is where the mill wheel is going to go and I'm going to build a building on here. This is the mill wheel. Um, yeah, it came as a laser cut MDF kit. It's, well, it was very basic as you can see from these photographs and I've done quite a lot of work with it. I, I took the model and then stuck it to balsa wood and cut out the balsa wood and I've scribed in there and put in more details and rivets and everything else and put wood on all of the, on the paddles. I don't know if that's the technical term on a water mill, but um, so now I have a mill wheel which I, I'm quite pleased with, that would be a lot better to paint. Um, it's got some high quality Mantic cartwheels on here, because uh, they're rubbish as actual cartwheels, they bend and buckle, but they add that nice bit of extra structure and proper kind of uh, look to the mill wheel, and that's going to sit down here. Um, all I need now is to build the actual mill, which I haven't done yet. Now, all the buildings in Benfield are built entirely from bolter wood. Um, I haven't used foam core or, or XPS foam or anything else and this is going to be a wooden building as well and I'm going to make this entirely from box wood. Now annoyingly, the one thing I really need to do first of all is texture the island, uh, sand it and, and do the water in bits and pieces so I can build the building on top of it. But I haven't brought any of that with me so I'm going to work out and think about how the building's going to work um, before I stick anything down and texture this. So that's what we're going to do to, in this part of the video, we're going to work with box wood and we're going to think about how this is all going to look. First thing I need to do is cut some strips of balsa that are going to make the wooden floor of the building. Okay, bear with me. I'll come back when we've got some balsa wood cut. Okay, so I've cut a number of bits of balsa wood now. Two of these bits, all from the same thickness. What's that? Well, this is pretty cheapy balsa wood, but that's about three or four mil thick. My idea is to have one set of boards like this and another set. So we've got a roughly square building, apart from the fact that I like the, the different levels of this island. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off some of this balsa from about here across here and then this will be this part of the balsa wood will sit down lower and we'll have a platform that boats can kind of like come and tie up to so the building is going to be on here and here be an l-shaped building and this is going to be a little jetty i've cut a couple of these bits of um balsa that's about well it's about 10 mil square section which i'm going to carve down and they are going to make the uh they're going to go underneath and hold everything up. And the other thing I'm going to do, because this is a wooden building, it wouldn't necessarily just be sat on the floor. I've cut all these strips of three mil thick balsa, which I'm actually going to use to structure the building to sit on top. Thus, which is going to lift the main part of the wood off the floor and that will give me my jetty under there as well. The first thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to uh, just cut out, decide on the size of my main floor for the building and then I'm going to scribe planking into that balsa wood which is really easy because balsa wood is nice and soft and you can use a bar on that and it'll look cool. Then I'm going to stick it down to all the uh, uh, wooden beams that go in underneath the floor and that will give me a much better idea of how the building is going to work. Then I'm going to work out the walls. Wish me luck. There's our island then, here are my planks of wood look and you can see that I have taken my biro and punched in nail holes all over this. 
And of course, they're not realistic from a size point of view. But what you do get is you get a nice little effect when you paint them. So it's well worth doing. It only takes a moment or two because bolts are so soft, it's really easy to do. Okay, so now uh, here's the car on the island. Of course, this is all going to be uh, sanded and painted, which will look really cool because then you get to see underneath bits of the model all the rest of it gives a real far more natural kind of feel to the whole thing these strips are going to be stuck to the bottom of the building but what this is then going to do is they're going to sit on here and this one is going to sit on there that gives me the shape for my main building and then it's going to have that pile under there holding that upside there and then this is going to cut away and I'm going to end up with this part down here acting as a jetty um, which will have its own piles underneath it and then boats can come alongside that that'll look pretty cool so i'm now going to describe the planking into this one and do the nail work on that as well uh, and that then gives me my structure for the floor of the boat the building probably going to leave these exposed there'll be more of those because um, again that gives me the options to play with when i'm making the model so Scribe the planks on the jetty. That's the next job. Doing all by, I'm using a ruler because you know, I want relatively straight planks, but I'm not worried too much about thickness of the planks. I'm kind of guessing I'm going for roughly the same thickness, but it doesn't matter if they're not all the same thickness. Again, because it's a building out in the marsh and they've, they've used whatever they can, and the carpenters are beaver anyway and he gnaws his way through stuff and blah 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 so there we go look there are my planks um, and again just for interest's sake using my bar rope I'm going to draw across here and make different length planks and now we're going to nail the whole thing so two holes right across every board at the top and then wherever I've got a split board and then across the bottom as well and this will look cool when it's painted and that then is the jetty that's going to go under there coming already, I like it so I've learned from experience with this particular car and model that what you need to do is paint the island first um, so I've Graveled it, there's some slate, and then there's stone, and then there's sand on this, and then I've undercoated it. I haven't done the water, that's going to be done later. But uh, to get the best results, I need to paint this before I put the building on it. Now obviously, as it's black already, I've denied you the uh, pleasure of seeing me put sand and stuff on this. But you've probably seen me sand models before, and if you haven't seen me sand models before, go and watch some of my other videos, because there's an awful lot of sand that gets applied to different models at one point or another. What is interesting here, of course, is you can see that I haven't fully sanded it, and all the white is where I clearly didn't get glue and sand, and it's eaten into the polystyrene. None of that matters, because that will all get painted anyway, so that's not a problem. And all of this side is going to be completely covered by building. But this way I can paint all this and then all the bits that you'll be able to look underneath of the model, it will all be painted and I won't have to worry about it trying to do it when the model's all assembled, which is terribly complicated. So next job then, paint the island. This is the island part of the model, I've given it a very basic paint job. Um, the stonework is uh, it's all undercoated black as you saw. The stonework is kind of three different layers of grey. Uh, Mechanicus and Administratum and then uh, actually some Zandri dust on the top and the browns again is mostly Morfang brown dry brushed with XV88 and then your Shabti bone and Zandri dust that way around and then Willis Scenic mid green flock applied now I've done this because uh, I want to be able to see underneath and through the gaps I've deliberately made this so that when there's a platform on here with the building on it, you'll be able to see through here and that kind of thing. So I haven't had the need to do any water yet. I'll add water and paint the water when I've put in the um, uprights, the piles that support the jetties over here, and when the wheel is on, and then that way there. But this way, the island is painted already, and then I'll be able to uh, paint other bits. I will we'll be painting bits as I go along with this, I think, rather than all in one go at the end. Let's take a, a moment to have a closer look at the water wheel. The water wheel is 
Um, a laser cut MDF one. Well, it started off as a laser cut MDF one. In fact, it started off as this. This is a uh, from blots.co.uk, and it's a laser cut water the wheel. Six quid it cost. And in fact, I've seen the exact same model on eBay for about three pound fifty. Now, I've always said I'm not much of a fan of MDF laser cut models. Uh, not personally, I can see their purpose and in many ways this has enabled an enormous number of people to get some pretty nice looking battlefields made really quite quick. Um, the problem is, is when you've got the, a model like this, I think you still have to do quite a lot of it to make it look okay. But having said all of that, the cool thing about that is that, and this, is that it did all the really hard work for me. It was totally worth £6 because it's all the right shape. It's got the right bit cut out at the bottom here. It's got all the paddles worked out and everything else. I didn't have to fanny around doing any of that. Cutting balsa wood, cutting circles is really actually quite tricky to get them really good. So with this, I was able to stick balsa wood to it and then carve it off when it was all solid and then draw into the balsa wood and make it look a bit more wood type, which I think it's going to end up looking really cool when it's painted. Um, that, painted as it is, would be very flat and dull. This enhanced quite a bit. And I think when you get MDF models, you have to do work with them. It's great for some people. Slap them together, stick them together, slap some paint on them, get them on the table. They're uh, cost effective and you get a half decent looking battlefield, which gets people playing. But for me, a big part of the hobby uh, is the model making and the aesthetics. But this was an absolutely brilliant solution for making a water wheel. So well worth it. So uh, nice one, Plots. Six quid. Good job. Um, all I've done, uh, along with the balsa, is I've enhanced it with some of the Mantic Terrain Crate plastic wheels um, off the cart, which were absolutely rubbish on the cart because they're that crap plastic that doesn't actually hold any weight and buckles all the time but I stuck rigid on there to give me some extra texture and extra bit of machinery and, and helping out the whole wheel I think that's gonna look pretty nice so I'm looking forward to getting this finally stuck onto this model uh, worked out what's gonna go inside the building I've no idea how a water mill actually should work well some idea but I'm not worrying too much about how the machinery looks inside but I'm really looking forward to getting this on the model and painted up I think it's gonna look pretty nice now I've got the island painted, I'm going to start to work out how the rest of the building is going to go together. I've cut out and made the main platform and most of the building is going to go on this. I've then also got this jetty here that's going to be down lower. I didn't really need to, I could have done it all there and had it all up high but I think it'll be cool. It'll be more interesting if there are different levels and steps and bits and pieces because then I've also cut out this jetty that I want to go on here and that will be at a different level again this way I'll be able to bring model boats right up to the edge here uh, that'll look quite cool um, so my quandary at the moment is whether I stick this down uh, and paint it or whether I start keeping it all loose for the moment and what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out where the piles go underneath to support this and you can see down here and here I'm putting in a pile to support that so I'm going to stick those in so I can start to work around so I can put the water on and the same with the water wheel although well, I can't help thinking the water wheel again might be better off if I paint it first do a basic undercoat or base coat paint job on it because it's going to be a lot easier to paint it separate than it is to be painting it when it's kind of like attached to the model <coughs> so I think I'm going to go for one of the things I'm going to go for is an undercoat on this and a paint on this paint on the woodwork detailing and wet stuff that's fine I'll do that later alright so that's the different layers main platform here the lower platform and then this very low jetty here and what I've done is at the minute that platform sits on there, plus this one pile. Stuck in two piles here for this one, 
and there might have to be the other extra bit here and then this it's got a string of wooden piles that's gonna sit in the water there and support that and I think I'm gonna paint some of this before I put it on then I'm gonna be able to build the main building on top of it so I'm gonna end up with the island part all finished um, and then I'm going to work out the structure of the actual building that's going to go on top of those platforms. So the next job actually is to paint the various bits of timber and then put water onto the island, which onto the uh, rest of the base. That doesn't matter if it's not painted yet, but uh, it's all going to look pretty cool. Okay, now we've got the woodwork painted. These are all basic paints. It's like four levels of dry brushing. So I will add more detailed paintwork to it when the model's complete. But right now, all of that is now ready to have the main superstructure put on. I could actually stick all this in place and add the water around the base because at the minute, the minute it's all loose. If I put that in, stick all that on properly, I can then sort out exactly where the whole thing's going. Now you can see why I did it. I've got all the paint and flock and everything in there. Lit up nicely, that would be really cool. And again, to the island itself, it's going to have reeds and rushes and other foliage and stuff added to it too in the finishing process. But this looks quite cool, so I'm going to stick this on and then I can make the main part of the building. Okay, I'm going to add water to this now. Uh, I think I'm going to use Ron Seal Smooth Finish Filler, uh, which I'm going to put around the base. Give it a bit of texture, work it in. That is if it hasn't all dried up. <laughs> it's a little while since I've used this tube. Let's have a look and see. No, oh, no, we're good to go. Okay, squirt the stuff on in a worm. Take spare bit of plastic card with pointy end. Smear filler over base. Easy. This is where I'm at with the Watermill Island. I've given it a basic paint job. Um, Several layers I quite like. It's not great this box of wood, so I've got some interesting textures on it, but it's okay. All the paintwork needs more detailing, and I am going to add foliage and plants around the bottom of the island here, and I need to have some more water effects, falling water and the rest of it. But I'm ready, really, to now get on making the main building. Um, so that's now the next part we've got to do. So, to make the building then, uh, my first step was actually to go away and look at some proper water mills um, and see how they work, see how the workings inside works. It's not because I'm going to make a faithful reproduction of a water mill or tide mill. I'm not interested in making all the mechanics inside, but I am interested in kind of seeing how the mill works a little bit. I think for barrows and badgers, uh, I'm going to just assume that... Um, all the mechanism is inside boxing, you know, because uh, these creatures have got tails that get caught in the mechanisms and feathers and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to box in the mechanism. Um, but I do want some mechanism attached to the end of the wheel here and inside the building. If you've seen my Benfliot scenery, 
their marsh village scenery um, you'll notice it it's all pretty much uh, one level or very low rise in fact uh, the roofs are wrong really because they're kind of thatch roofs and they're not anywhere near tall enough um, to shed water and snow um, but uh, all the buildings are kind of like one level uh, but looking at mills water mills they totally aren't they need two or three levels so this will actually be quite an interesting thing because this is going to give me um, uh, a different height perspective on the on the table so this is going to be at least two levels this this building with a thatched roof as well i do have ideas for another taller building for benfliot but that's going to be a completely a different video so this model is going to be made like the other buildings in this set which is entirely from balsa wood um i'm going to leave out the foam core or anything else just going straight for a balsa wood build the walls will be thinner but i can get more action going on this side so i'm now going to fiddle around with different balsa structures build a two-story building on top of this where the first floor lifts off and the second floor goes into it which has got suggestions of mechanism and a mill wheel i think this is the first floor of the mill then um all balsa wood and i haven't stuck it down it was a bit of a fiddly construction really it probably took longer than it would have done if i made it in foam core and just covered it in balsa but um, it gives me more room inside. I've got these big heavy beams across the top and this is going to take a first floor. There probably won't be a first floor over the entrance. That will either be a flat roof, it will be pretty cool with a balcony on it maybe. Because um, from a gaming point of view that will be quite neat. And then I'm going to have the first floor overhanging the, the mill wheel here. Probably sticking out a little bit so they've got jetties. Um, and that's going to give this building quite a bit of height compared to um, some of the other models. In Benfliot, which is quite neat, and then it will have a, a thatch roof on the top as well. So this is coming on quite nicely as well. Um, it's going to look quite sweet. Um, all wood. Uh, one of the redeeming features about this model is it's going to be really easy to get painted up because it's just going to be wood, 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 um, dry brushed. Might put some colour on it, but I don't have to necessarily. And I'm in two minds now about whether I'm going to put any mill mechanism in the model at all. Um, it might just get in the way of gameplay. It's not a very big model, so I might just leave it out and we'll just pretend it's an abstract thing, which is fine. So next stage, next level of balsa, but I'm running out of some of the uh, square section that I'd like to use to help build this. the next level. I've got to work it out, but yeah, get in there. It's all good, but the time now is quarter to three in the morning. I know I'm an out night owl, but it's time to go to bed. So this is me adding the first floor to the ground floor of the water mill. Um, I decided first of all that I'd have the main floor, which is cut from three millimeter balsa wood. I've described in the planks. As you can see, I also cut in a hole for the ladder to go through which is probably not quite in the right place I've also well it's not bad um, this is used two bits of bolter and I stuck it together with two bits of bolter and I put these in the right place so they'll hold here and here and they hold it in place and in, in the hole I then cut a separate piece of bolter which goes on here this is going to be this goes uh, over the door, the entrance to the building. Um, this is going to be an open air platform, whereas this bit here is going to be building. Now, since then, I've also made the gable ends for the building. Just got to finish this one off. This time, one and a half millimeter bolster. I've cut a high window in. Not there's going to be any way of getting up there. It just allows light in and a larger window. And this one is going to go at this end down here, leaving a walkway over the top of the water wheel. Um, and I made this gable end, it's going to go on there. Now I have to make front and back walls with windows and doors cut into it. And I'm nearly there. Um, I'll then have to make a roof, which is going to be um, made with uh, teddy bear fur, because it's going to be thatch. And then we're, we're pretty much good to go. Stick it all together, paint the damn thing. Yeah, coming on nicely. So, walls next here and here. 
Now most of the top, the first floor of the mill being done, I didn't think about how the roof was going to work and I've made the gable ends so the roof is going to have to just come up and lift off all in one go. It's going to be quite a tall building this compared to other buildings in Benfliot, which is quite cool. Um, you can see none of this is stuck on yet. Um, I mean, uh, it's not entirely square. that work out a little bit when I stuck in the back wall. So you can see here the walkway over the top of the wheel, which is quite cool. Although, it's not really wide enough for much in the way of B&B &B figures. Um, they'll hang over the edge. Uh, I'll live with that. It can be a precarious walkway, it's not a problem. The problem with making models, models for burrows and badgers is even the smallest base in the game is 30 millimeters wide, which in a 28 millimeter um, piece of terrain is pretty big. The big beasts are on 40 and then 50 millimeter bases, which is even worse. So sometimes you you have to kind of like decide to go for it with the model rather than necessarily fit all the all the beasties. I might put a handrail up here. Uh, We'll have to see. I might leave it completely open. Uh, but we're coming on. So I'm now making the back wall section, which is going to go in over here. Um, and then this will all get stuck down to this floor. And then the thing that's left to do is to make the roof. It is kind of fiddly making um, bolts up buildings like this because you're kind of making all the frame and everything else, sticking it to the balsa wood, keep it all rigid. Um, but what it does do is it gives you a different texture to the um, XPS foam models that I've made, which is pretty cool. And from a painting point of view, it's all wood. It's not going to take very much time to paint at all because it's going to go black and then it's going to go brown and then dry brush, dry brush, dry brush, job done. So although I've still got a little way to go from making a model point of view, the paint job should be relatively quick. Fingers crossed. All the fingers crossed. Right, back to making the back wall. Right, that's the um, back door done, back wall done. So now it's, that's the whole bolster structure uh, completed on the water mill. I'm really pleased with this. Uh, it's looking pretty cool. I can't wait to get this painted and on the table with the other uh, models of Benfliot. Big doors. It could do with a crane, I suppose, some winch or hoist for pulling up the grain to come up here. I'm kind of tempted to put in bits of mill workings, but I just think it's going to get in the way. Um, from a gameplay point of view, by the time you put a couple of figures in it, um, I mean, all right, you can have a kind of Pirates of the Caribbean-esque kind of sword fight type thing going on it from the first movie, but um, as opposed to that terrible one from the second movie with the water wheel. <laughs> but, um, I think in some ways it'd just be better if I just have it stacked up with kind of like loose sacks, crates and things like that. Um, but it's going to be pretty cool. So now I've got to find some thick cardboard, mountain board kind of thickness, uh, and make a roof and uh, use my find what I did with the uh, teddy bear and do the thatch to go on top and we're nearly there it's pretty cool got to stick this down to this mind you I'm going to paint all the bolsters separate to the rest of the model because the rest of the model obviously is mostly painted so I'll, I'll paint all that separately and then s assemble this one stick it all together when most of it almost the basic paint work is done um, and then I'll stick it together and then I'll do um, detailing stuff so, roof next, teddy bear fur, got to go and find it. Alright, so I'm painting, putting a base coat of paint on the mill uh, and starting doing the roof. Nice red thatch, check that out. So I'm basically painting a, an acrylic base coat. I'm not bothering spraying, I'm using uh, Windsor & Newton acrylic paint, lots of it because this is going to get used and then I'm going to dry brush this all up next job is to mod podge the roof thatch and then I've got to stick thatch to the two separate roof pieces one, two and then mod podge them um, yeah we're, we're very nearly there 
So they're going to stick them on tonight, mod podge them, uh, they'll be dry enough to paint tomorrow, I hope, is the plan. So uh, yeah, we're getting on. And while that's all drying, I can brush up, dry brush up the actual model building itself and start sticking it and assembling it. This is a roof piece then. I'm gonna go in there. This is a piece of teddy bear fur. Now you have to check and make sure the way the fur lies, the way you, the way you want the thatch to run. And then I'm gonna stick this on with uh, all purpose adhesive. So I can work with it pretty quick and stick it on there. And then when that's gonna give that a little while to dry and then I'm gonna trim that off turn it over and mod podge it. This strip of bolster here sits in here and holds it in place when it's sat on the model. So pretty simple. <coughs> so I can get on with that in Mod Podge. And then I'll leave the Mod Podge to dry for 24 hours. So, that's one. And then I've got to do the other one. Same thing with this. Okay, so now we've got the roof done. Um, separate pieces I've had to trim down my wooden stops so they fit in now because the way the roof fits underneath uh, the top part of the thatch but they're getting quite nice um, still a bit soft it hasn't gone completely solid next job and what I should have done was mix some acrylic paint in with the Mod Podge when I painted this because now I'm going to have to uh, prime it which is a bit of a pain in the neck so I'm going to prime it using the same acrylic that I've painted the rest of the base coat of the model on. I'm uh, going to let that dry and then we're going to wield that dry brush because we're very close now to getting this thing finished. Alright, thatch on, walls base coated, let's paint this bad boy, get it finished. And there comes a point when you're dry brushing this stuff where you just kept the point going, well, how much further do I have to go? This is Ed. Um, about three or four different layers of dry brushing on there and I think it's looking pretty good as weathered wood. I'm gonna put some washes on it, I think. And then uh probably gonna call it a call it a day to be honest. That's the thatch roof. That looks pretty cool. It's a lot of brown, and a lot of brown. But I think it's gonna look quite good with all the other stuff. Let's get it finished. Painted, washed, and a flock, and now I need foliage. And then this baby's gonna be pretty much done. Pretty pleased with this. I mean, it's a fairly plain looking building compared to others, but then, you know, it's utilitarian and worky. But, uh, it looks quite cool. Yeah, let's get some, finish the base of it. Okay, so I'm going to put some extra foliage and plant some things around the base of this model um, to keep it matching up with everything else. I'm mostly going to use TP ball rushes. These are uh, three quarters of an inch tall, double O gauge ones. These are a nice, a whole pack of those. I won't use them all because there's not much that much space, but down here. Around the edge is going to have a whole bunch of rushes there, maybe around the other side. Might drop in the odd marshmallow gold. I'm going to put a bit of flock on the roof as well for some moss because I want this thatch to be kind of like pretty heavy and old I suppose so as some of the other thatch in some of the other models which is quite new and kind of like neat looking let's um, see how they go ball rushes grow pretty thick um, so I like to put quite a few on these mm, could be considered quite an expensive way of doing things but I, I quite like it, it's a nice looking effect so. 
Although, of course, they should really have their feet, their roots in the water, but I'm assuming as this is marsh, it's all so wet, the rushes grow quite happily on the edge of the bank as well. There really should be some down here. I think I'm going to stick some down there as well, that'll add to it. Rushes over there, marsh marigolds over here. Pretty! This is the, the finished water milk. I'm really quite pleased with this. You've probably noticed during this video that I haven't been in my normal workspace. Um, I've been elsewhere, I've had to come up and camp out. Um, and I haven't had access to a lot of stuff I normally would have, including other models from this particular range, this collection. So I haven't put this with those models yet. I'm going to do that in a minute, right at the end. There'll be that sexy bit, you know, the bit where it all goes on the table. So I'm hoping it kind of like works. Um, it's been an interesting build, this one. I'm really pleased to finish this off because, like I said right at the start, the water wheel and the base I've had kicking around for over a year. Get it done, get it finished, get it off the pile, get it sorted and get it played with. Very satisfying. Uh, all bolts of wood construction, like many of my other Benfield buildings, actually is a bit of a pain. It's kind of fiddly. Um, Sometimes it's a lot easier to work with stuff like foam core and just clad it and bolt and go for it. But actually it's a very pleasing result and the walls are quite thin which means there's quite a lot of stuff inside. I keep toying with the idea of putting details inside the building and I keep having to bring myself back and decide no I'm not going to do that because I want the playability in there. Uh, and it's really still tempting to stick in some mill machinery but I just don't need it. It's not necessary for a game so it ain't going in. He said famous last words, although you never know, there might be an update in the future when I've stuck some bits in just to make it look even cooler. Um, so from that point of view, I uh, hope you like this model. Um, if you do, leave a comment down below. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and that kind of thing. If you're uh, new to Magrathea Builder Worlds, this is the first one of my builds you've seen, then do please go check out my playlist and see the other things I've made uh, to go along with this and all sorts of other bits and pieces. Check out the Burrows and Badgers videos or Necromunda or whatever takes your fancy. If you're an old hand now and you've been here a long time, thank you so much. Three and a half thousand people now watch me make models, which is just epic and if you're one of those really really special people who have signed up to my patreon then in a very short time you might be one of the first people who gets a commission build for free well not for free but you know for the price of a cup of coffee from me for you so everybody thank you so much for your support i really really hope that you'll come back and join me another time on magathea builder worlds thanks for watching now the sexy bit <laughs>